Today we go up against the best of the best. You compete against Thunder, you go home sore like the rest. Today on American Gladiators, he's an officer for the U.S. Border Patrol keeping illegal aliens and illicit drugs out. But today, Craig Charles is on the other side, about to cross the border into Gladiator Arena. He'll face Mark Anthony, a standout defensive back from Pasadena City College. When I told my dad that I'm going to be on American Gladiators, he said, that's great. But what about Gemini? Diamond is in the rough today, so watch out. On the women's side, Jill Shank from Tampa, a recovering alcoholic who's lifted herself up to stand with the champions. She'll meet Kimberly Lentz, an account representative for American Express. Is Kim here with the will to win? Believe me, I didn't leave home without it. But now you've come to the home of the American Gladiators, so kick your shoes off and come on in. Ladies and gentlemen, from Gladiator Arena in Los Angeles, California, here are your American Gladiators. Ice, Gemini, Diamond, Thunder, Zap, Laser, Gold, Nitro, Flame, and Turbo. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents the American Gladiators. Let the games begin. Hi again, everyone. I'm Mike Danley, along with NFL Hall of Fame fullback Larry Zonka. Welcome to another edition of the American Gladiators. Today, we'll unveil another brand new event. It's something we call a maze, a 20-ton labyrinth that is diabolically puzzling. But first up, another first half preliminary round. You've spent a lot of time with the contenders, Larry, men and women. Any one contender stand out to you? Oh, Mike, I like uh, Craig Charles from Overland Park, Kansas. Tough kid, used to competing on his own, boxing, racquetball champion. He's got a lot of heart, and I think he'll give us a great show. A reminder, too, American Gladiators split into two seasons as we'll crown a first half winner, a second half winner, and ultimately a grand champion. Believe me, Craig Charles, followed out by Mark Anthony, both have their eyes on that grand championship. But let's get things started. The business at hand. Our first event today, <laughs> men's Powerball. Powerball, 60 seconds. The contenders have to score as many times as they can in one of those five cylinders. Outer cylinders worth two points. Center cylinder worth three. Well, that doesn't sound too difficult, Mike, until you consider the fact that there are three gladiators in the middle of that field, and they don't want you to score. And in this case, it's Thunder, Laser, and Turbo. Turbo's fans have showed up in force. A look now at Mark Anthony, he in the gray uniform, student at Pasadena City College, lettered in football there, ran a 4-7-40 in our tryouts, Larry, and his opposition in this preliminary round, Craig Charles, and I know you like him. Oh, he's a boxer, Mike. He's used to being on his own, facing the odds. I'll tell you what, both of these fellas are kind of small, particularly when you contrast them against the size of these gladiators. So we'll see if their quickness can get them through it alive. And Powerball is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of Super NES. Now you're playing with power, super power. Ready? Oh, nice move and a great spin move, but Mark Anthony dropped the ball. Turbo had him corralled. He got away for a second and couldn't put Get it in. But Craig Charles does. Craig Charles losing his helmet in the effort. No, now both contenders jammed up at the same end of the uh, Powerball floor. Craig having a lot of trouble hanging on to that ball. And Mark Anthony may be making too many moves. Laser corralling Mark Anthony. Oh. Craig desperately trying to uh, score. Turbo rubs his face into the turf. And that is it. And a near shutout for the Gladiators as Craig Charles walks away with the only points from this match. Both contenders getting congratulated by the Gladiators for their efforts. Well, they might be getting congratulations now, but they've got some bumps and bruises from the Gladiators that they're going to have to get over. And right here, Craig Charles exactly what I'm talking about. He makes the score, but he pays dearly for it. On the other hand, Mark Anthony just spends too much time with the fakes. He's got to give one fake and go, just like in the NFL. There's no time. And Larry, when Mark did economize his movement, watch what happens. He fumbles the ball. Here he gets away from Turbo. He's going for the center cylinder, and there the critical fumble. And then a case of too many moves at the end. This time he fakes 
himself out and goes to the mat. So Mark Anthony actually does the Gladiators a favor. Craig Charles walks away with a 2-0 victory in Powerball. Well, the women are set to go, and there's Jill Shank and Kimberly Lentz walking from the locker room, about to put on their protective headgear. And they'll need it because our trio of Gladiators, like our men, very, very tough in Powerball. I got occasion to talk with Jill Shank earlier, and I'll tell you, this gal's a winner. She's a recovering alcoholic, and she sees the Gladiators as a milestone in that recovery. Jill's opponent, Larry, in this preliminary round match is Kimberly Lentz, one of the most effervescent contenders I've ever seen, but don't let that smile fool you. When it's time to compete, she turns on the afterburners, and she'll have to because she'll be going against Ice, Gold, and Blaze. Powerball, rude way to start the competition. It's like getting a wake-up call at about 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Bucket of cold water as we look at our two contenders. Kimberly Lynch comes to us from New York. She's 26 years old, 135 pounds, and a customer service rep for American Express. And there's Jill Schenk. She comes from Tarpon Springs, Florida, where she's a substitute teacher and waitress. Okay, our referee, Larry Thompson, about to start the match. Again, 45 seconds. Object here. Ready? Score as many times as you can. Outside cylinders worth two points. Inside cylinders worth three. Interesting technique there by Kimberly Lentz. Gold had her wrapped up. She just went for the jump shot. Jill trying to power her way past Gold. <laughs> and Gold throws her away. Nice move. Ice says no way. 10 seconds to go. Neither contender has scored. Oh! Jill almost did. Gold gives a little shot. pat on the back, and boy, time has expired. The shutout. Larry, how many times have you heard coaches and managers say, I want my team to set the tone early? Well, that's exactly what the Gladiators did. Set the tone for their team, a whitewash. Jill Schenk recovering from that go-around in Powerball. Here she takes on Gold, head up Gold. Of course, just manhandles her, picks her up, and slams her down. <laughs> Throws her away like a toy. And here's Ice doing the same thing with Kimberly. Flat eaters, I don't know if you're aware of this, but according to our crack stat man, that is the first shutout ever for the female Gladiators. eaters. Ice, how do you feel? Oh, hot, hot. I love this game. It's the best game on the floor. Gold, you talk about laying down the law early. You did. Well, before I went out, I got some tips from Turbo, and it paid off. He knows what he's doing. Blaze, you had that look of intimidation on your face. So well, I didn't even have to do anything, you know? They were taking care of both ends. You were sort of the free safety back. Yes, yes. All right, congratulations. A shout-out for the Gladiators. Hang with us. Hang Tough is next. Second event for the men is Hang Tough, and Mark Anthony, who is shut out in Powerball, is up first. And Larry, a chance to earn some big points here. If the contender can swing all the way across to the Gladiators platform, he'll pick up 10 points. If he can hang tough, that is last the entire 60 seconds, he'll earn five for the draw. Well, Mark's got a look of determination on his face. I spoke to him a little earlier, and he said he, uh, out of all the events, Hang Tough was his least favorite. So he's in a little bit of a bind here. Nitro's got a pretty good kill percentage. Ready? So, Record yeah. of five and two. And Mark is on his way. A gymnast dream, a contender's nightmare. 55 rings here from which to choose from. Oh, he's trying to make a quick move. You gotta get that next one. However, in making that quick move, he lost all of his momentum. Now he's hanging on to just one ring. Now he's got two. He's going to have to go back and start all over again. Now, a contender must make a forward advance at all times towards that platform. Oh, he's forward advancing right towards Nitro and, and realizes it and says it's time to back up. Nitro's got him. Can Mark hang on for 17 seconds? Trying to shake Nitro loose now. Nitro realizes this guy is going to hang tough. Eight seconds, seven seconds, six seconds. Oh! Gets him off. 
<laughs> Looked pretty angry there for a second, but they're congratulating each other now. Oh, so close, and Nitro ups his record in Hang Tough to six and two. And Mark Anthony must be a fan of MC Hammer because he seems to be telling Nitro, you can't touch this, but Nitro about to do a lot of touching. Mark Anthony trying to shake Nitro off. Nitro gets that hammer hold up high, almost slips off, but finally pulls one arm off for Mark and then lets his weight do the trick. Now Craig Charles, our United States immigration officer, will try to hang tough. He's got a well-rounded athletic background, a two-time Golden Gloves champion. Here's his story. One day in Adair, Craig Charles took up boxing at Kansas State University, and it didn't take him long to become a sanctioned Golden Glove. Now, I never knew I had talent in boxing, but uh, I did it two years in a row and, and never lost a fight. Now Craig fights on a different front, the U.S.-Mexican border. Trying to monitor illegal aliens is a near impossible job. Well, we are outnumbered. Uh, we'll, catch, uh, we'll, we'll catch the same alien uh, three times in one day. I'll know him by name. And uh, it is ridiculous, but if we weren't down there, then there would be an influx and everybody would come over. Now he's happy to use his skills as a border patrol agent here on American Gladiators. I've chased little guys, I've chased big guys. And I'll catch him and I'll evade him. Well, the key word there is evade. He's going to have to evade Nitro, our gladiator. Ready? Again, we like to compile stats on how our gladiators have done over the seasons we've been on the air. Gladiator Nitro, six and two, and hang tough. And very, very proficient once he gets a hold of you, tearing you off the rings and taking it to the mat. Slow and deliberate. Greg looking for another ring to swing to. Referee Larry Thompson instructing Nitro to let go of that jersey. Nitro hamming it up a little bit. We'll find out how strong Craig Charles is here. Nitro's got the advantage, obviously. It's Having his body weight against Craig out. Charles' oh. fingers. So Nitro, two for two, pulling down both Mark and Craig and upping his record to seven and two in this event. Nitro takes a little time to press the flesh with some of the Gladiator fans. And he's doing a little pressing here. Seems almost bored with the situation. Kimberly Lance is up first in Hang Tough, and she's got a whole rooting section for here. <laughs> Gladiator Arena, her mom's on hand. Good sound athlete, Mike, pound for pound, a tough gal. The gladiator that Kim will have to get by and hang tough is Diamond, one of the very best. She is so graceful up there, and she has those long, long legs that can wrap a contender up and take her to the mat. Ready? Again, a contender has 60 seconds to try to swing across to the Gladiators platform. Kim Lemps moving well, but look at Diamond close in. Larry Thompson, the referee, ordering Diamond to let loose of the close. Diamond, so graceful, which you alluded to a little earlier. She just comes right over like a spider on a web. And that leg lock usually spells the end for the contender now working on Kim's hands and takes her down now you see why they call it hang tough 21 seconds left on the clock a 39 second takedown for diamond diamond reveling in her victory she continues to shine at hang tough as she seizes Kimberly wraps her up with those long legs and then strips her fingers off of the ring. And takes her to the mat. All right, Jill Shank is up, 24 years old. Tarpon Springs, Florida. Jill looking to get on the board after getting shut out in Powerball. Great opportunity for her to move ahead in the points. The bad news, of course, guess who's standing on the Gladiator <laughs> platform? Just a shot of that says it all. <laughs> Great kill ratio. Nice and smooth. 
Almost floats through the air. Jill keeping one eye on the rings, one eye on Diamond. Jill looks at home on those rings. A little gymnastics in her background somewhere. Oh, Diamond almost, Diamond misses a ring and almost comes unloosed. Unfortunately, Jill swang right into Diamond's reach. 30 seconds left. Hang tough. Oh, she's slipping, diamond slipping. Yanking her body up and down, Whoa. trying to get Jill off, and she does. Great effort on Diamond's part. I'll tell you what, great effort on Jill's part, <laughs> just to hang up there Jill, as long as she did. Jill's got some very long fingers now, Mike. <laughs> so two events down and five to go. Jill and Kimberly have yet to score. Maybe something will give because the joust is next. After two events here in this preliminary round, Craig Charles with a 2-0 lead over Mark Anthony as the men are now set to joust. First up will be Craig. And it'll be interesting to see if Craig's Golden Glove boxing experience will pay off. Well, sure couldn't hurt him any. In the joust, if the contender is lucky enough to knock the gladiator off, they pick up 10 points. If they go the distance, they draw for five. Speaking of draws, Craig gets turbo. And one man mighty interested in Craig's performance, his opponent, Mark Anthony. Come on, Craig! On guard! <laughs> Look how aggressive Craig Charles is. Turbo just holding his ground, trying to ward off some of those blows. Nope. I don't know if Turbo was shot or that was his game plan to let Craig take his best shot and then fire back when Craig ran out of ammunition. And Craig, Craig just wore himself out. Ah, looked like Turbo was almost plotting that. So Craig Charles has been polished off and now it's Mark Anthony's turn. And while Turbo climbs back up to the jousting platform, we'll take this time out for the feature that allows our fans to ask our gladiators questions. Now Angie Karekos from Pennsylvania writes in to Turbo, I watch the show regularly. What would you say is the hardest event? Angie, in my opinion, Powerball would be the hardest event. Reason why is because you're going for 45 seconds. This is nonstop action, and everything you see is hard hitting. And we're not easing up on these guys at all. We're trying to drive them into the ground as hard as we can. And believe me, it takes its toll on us as well as it does them. Turbo can say the same thing about the joust as well. He likes to drive them into the ground. If you'd like to ask our gladiators a question, you can write to 10203 Santa Monica Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 967. On guard! Again, the contender has 30 seconds to try to knock the gladiator oh, off the platform. Man. Turbo, the aggressor, right off the bat. Mark in real trouble. Turbo delivering blows, any one of which would probably take Mark off there, but he's doing it so fast. Finally gets the overload, heals him off. Literally had him punch drunk there. He couldn't fall off because he was getting hit from both directions so rapidly. And Mark Anthony, very disappointed, still has yet to score here in this preliminary round match with Craig Charles. Well, he should be disappointed. He never really got off the mark. He absorbed the blows, but his feet got together and he lost his balance, and off he went. Turbo goes two for two, and the chant you hear now is for Ice Ice Baby, because the women are set to joust, and this may be Ice's favorite event, because she loves to wail on contenders. Jill Shank is up first. She is yet to score. Ice not the ideal gladiator to get well against. Kimberly Lentz, she's waiting in the wings and watching. She hasn't scored either. On guard! Jill trying to hang back, staying away from uh, Ice's reach. Hang back and bob and weave. 
Ice really hasn't laid much of a pugil oh. stick on her until there. The ice wised up, took a hold of the far end of the pugil stick so she could reach her. Now she's battering her with it. Overhand rights to the back of Jill Shank. However, time has expired, and Jill Shank finally on the scoreboard, earning five points for the draw. Wise strategy, hung back to the back of the platform, made ice come to her. Kimberly Lentz is up now. She draws ice. See if she uses the same strategy that Jill Shank employed to earn the draw. That was staying away. And there's Kim's mom looking on. What is my daughter doing? <laughs> <laughs> Problem with that same uh, philosophy is now Ice is aware of it. She's going to reach out and touch someone. Kim a little off balance. Kim trying to muscle ice, that's not a good idea. 15 seconds left. Kim gets a shot to the helmet of ice. Trying to keep ice on the defensive just to stay up. And that is it, Kimberly Lentz, like Jill Shank, goes the distance and earns five points for the draw. They didn't get knocked off, and they lasted the entire 30 seconds. And finally, our women are on the scoreboard. Well, we're halfway through the competition and in this men's prelim, a low-scoring affair between Craig Charles and Mark Anthony. Craig just coming up with the only point score, just two points. I really thought it would be quite the opposite. I thought the fellas would score a lot of points. The women would be held to just a few. Perhaps we should tip our hat to the Gladiators. They've been extra yeah. tough. In the women's competition, well, Ice joins us now down from the Gladiators' locker room. Both Kimberly Lentz and Jill Shank got off to a slow start, but they did well by earning draws against you. Are you impressed by the caliber of competition, Ice? I think they're really good athletes, Mike, and they're doing really well. And um, we have some new events coming up, though, and I think they're going to be in for a good surprise. One of those new events, something we call the maze. It's a 40 by 80 foot structure. It stretches the entire length of the arena floor. And you have an advantage in this thing, don't you? You get to hide behind one of those panels. We get to surprise them and come up. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good game, really exciting. And uh, I think all of us are going to have a lot of fun in it. All right, Ice, we're looking forward to seeing you in the maze. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. You're comfortable. comfortable. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. After three events, Jill Shank and Kimberly Lentz tied at five apiece as they are set to go at it in Atlasphere, our 60-second game of nonstop action where the contenders must roll their spheres into one of four numbered scoring pods, each goal worth two points. And Mike, both our contenders have drawn a little blood in the joust. They come up with five oh, yeah, points yeah. apiece as we watch Zap load into her Atlasphere. I think they're a little pumped up, but you know this game of Atlasphere is a world apart from the joust. Okay. The joust all upper body, the atlasphere mostly lower body. Mike, this is the fourth event. It's a very pivotal event for these two contenders, tied 5-5. Both Jill and Kimberly would like to get some breathing room and set themselves up for the eliminator. Zap's partner, Gold. And atlasphere is brought to you by Skittles. Bite-sized candies, also in Wildberry, Tartan, Tangy, and Tropical. Contenders ready! Gladiators ready! <laughs> Referee Larry Thompson gets the match underway. Once they do get those atmospheres moving, the collisions can be deafening. Kimberly Lentz with a breakaway down towards scoring pod number three. Can she get it to settle and hit the sensor? She does. Meantime, Each score with two points, Larry, sorry. Meantime, Jill's trying to score. The goal says no way. Now she's breaking open. She has a shot at number two. Oh. Well, she hasn't settled in yet. Used a little momentum off of Gold to settle in. Gold actually helped her into that one. Now she's got it. Zap keeps Kimberly out of Scoring pod number one, 10 seconds remaining. Kimberly breaking open. Number four, can she make it settle? Yes. She picks it up. There's Jill at number one as the time runs out. Hey, 
And Kimberly Lentz picks up three goals worth six yeah. points. Jill Schenk, two goals worth four points. So Kimberly now with an 11-9 lead. Both women get a well-deserved breather, and here come our men. You know, Mike, at the top of the show, I had high expectations for Craig Charles. He's fallen a little short of the mark. He's going to have to mount an attack here. Well, Manon, let's get ready to go to work. Good news, first grab up from the inside. Okay, lock me in. I'm ready. Larry, I like Gemini's comments. This is serious business to him. Gemini. Not just another day at the office. They do it with tremendous enthusiasm. As we watch Mark Anthony trying to loosen himself up and knock a few <laughs> butterflies out as he loads into his atmosphere. He must have seen this event before. So as Greg Charles bangs his hands together trying to loosen up, believe me, they'll get loose in a hurry once that whistle blows. Bring it all, man. Let's go. Nitro set for that first big collision. Ready. 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 Match is underway. Each goal worth two points. Nitro really bangs Mark Anthony. Nice Craig little basic maneuver there. Both of them going to the outside. Craig Charles scored right off the bat in scoring pod number two. Mark Anthony's got a breakaway now. Will he get his first point in this whole match? No! Topsy Turvey comes up on the run. Gets into scoring pod number one. And the drought is finally over for Mark Anthony. It's coming up on number four. Mark picks it up on number four. He's following right along in the footsteps of the other two pods. with yet another scoring opportunity. Seven, three, four. There's Mark with another one. And it looks like after a three-event drought, Mark Anthony has won this Atlasphere battle against Craig Charles and is finally, finally on the scoreboard. And we're getting away from the hockey scores and now getting into some real gladiator scores. And Mark thought playing college football was tough. Craig Charles' parents know their son put forth a great effort. And once Mark gets out of the atmosphere, we'll continue with more of the American Gladiators because coming up next, the event you've all been waiting for, the maze. Mike Adamley and Larry Zonka back with you at Gladiator Arena. And now we will unveil for the first time our new event, the maze, a 40 by 80 foot labyrinth that is filled with all kind of pitfalls. Now picture yourself at an amusement park walking through the fun house, except there's no fun here, just gladiators like laser. And our gladiators have been looking forward to this version of hide and seek. Inside the maze are 12 steering panels, which means we can change the design of this puzzle anytime we want to. There are numerous ways a contender can go, but only two correct solutions. Brings to mind the old version of, how would you like to meet that guy walking down a dark alley? No way. A contender has 45 seconds to make it from one end of the maze to the other. The first man through gets 10 points. The second one through gets five. And the women are up first, Jill Shank versus Kimberly Lance. And right now, Mike, Kimberly enjoying an 11-9 lead over Jill Shank. And our four gladiators, each confined to a zone within the maze. Well, first up's gold, followed by Blaze. You get by Blaze, there's Diamond. And finally, last but not least, Ice. I don't know if I'd mind running into them in a dark alley. <laughs> Ready! And they're off. Whoops. <laughs> Jill wastes no time finding her gladiator and returning to another gladiator. Jill's got pretty good instincts, though. She's about to come out the other end. Whoops. Well, Kimberly doesn't. Oh. She's going around in circles down at the north end. <laughs> Jill just ran into Diamond. She's close. She's found She's a solution with 15 seconds remaining. So Jill Shank will pick up 10 points. Come on, Kimberly, don't stop. Kimberly's close. Seven. If she can get through, she does, with four seconds left on the clock, and she picks up five points. Kimberly Lynch was all over this maze. She was in the beginning, down to the middle, went back to the beginning again before finishing. 
So the women stay close, and Jill has regained the lead over Kimberly by three points. Remember, just two events to go, the wall and the all-important eliminator. The men are next, and you know, Larry, the maze is a new event for our gladiators as well, and I think they love the idea of suspense and then sudden impact. Uh, well, we talked about it before, the hide-and-seek syndrome. They're going to like that. Of course, I think they're going to need a flashlight and a compass to find their free zones within the maze. <laughs> it's as tough on them as it is our contenders. Big difference, of course, the contenders don't get hit. Inside the maze, laser, there's Gemini climbing over one of those steering panels. He decides to take the easy route. Nitro will be ducking down, that's for sure. And boy, how'd you like to get hit by thunder? Well, just picture Mark Anthony coming around the corner there. <laughs> All hunkered down, thinking he's getting away, and suddenly there's thunder. Bada boom, bada bing. <laughs> We're getting serious for a second. Craig has a narrow two-point lead over Mark Anthony. This is a 10-point event. In other words, the man who makes it across the finish line first picks up 10 points, so that could be a big swing in this event. Ready? Craig is already running to Gemini. Now there are four neutral zones here too, so the Gladiator can only go oh. so far. <laughs> Craig Tries Charles has back. almost worked his way out. Now he's going the wrong way. Uh-oh, uh he's gonna bump into laser here. Oh, he got by laser. He's through for 10 points. Oh, Mark Anthony just met uh, Thunder over there. Greg made it in 25 seconds. Mark Anthony has three seconds left to get to the other side and earn five points, but he can't do it. You're gonna have to throw him a rope, drag him out of there. So Craig Charles picks up 10 points and takes an 18-6 lead over Mark Anthony. And we'll be back with more of the American Gladiators after this. They're packed. Please tell me the pigs aren't right on the side. Okay, you have to put the It doesn't matter what the pigs are. Follow the contender because that is what's going to get them. Okay, okay cool. just get them. All right, let's go. All right. All right. In this preliminary round between Jill Schenk and Kimberly Lentz, after five events, Jill with a three-point lead. Anything can happen. The wall is next. This is a 10-point event here. The first one up the wall in 60 seconds or less earns 10 points. The second up earns five. Contenders are given a 10-second head start. Following Jill will be Ice. Ice Baby. Jill hoping that Ice Baby, Ice Baby is Nice Baby, Nice Baby. Gladiators and contenders looking skyward. The wall a little bit like solving a vertical puzzle. Following Kimberly Lentz will be Gold. Ready? The women get a 10 second head start, as do the men in this event. They've got 60 seconds to reach the top. Already, Ice has a hold of Jill. But Jill's not giving up easily. Pulls away, loses a shoe, and continues on. Gold, meanwhile, is hung in and has got a hold of Kimberly Lentz's left leg, left ankle. Jill off her pace. She's lost her grip there. Kind of stuck right at the outer edge. Ice closing the gap again. As Gold oh. slips up. Kimberly still has a chance, Larry. However, there are only 10 seconds left on the clock. Remember, they have to make it in 60 seconds or less. There goes Jill. So no point for her. Kimberly Lance. Oh, she's going to make it, but run out of time. No wall. No score for either woman, but oh, what an effort. And look at the strain etched in Gold's face. Jill's one tough pup. I stripped her shoe right off of her, and she continued on. So there's the score after six events. But now the men will try to do what Jill and Kimberly could not, and that's make it to the top. Craig Charles leading Mark Anthony 18-6. Craig Charles is going to be followed up that wall by Nitro. One man, one wall. <laughs> wait, wait, two man, two walls. You're going to get him this time, man. See that red scarf on his head? He's pulling it off. He wants it, too. <laughs> it's going to be a dog fight, dude. It's going to be a dog fight, man. Get him. 
And Mark Anthony knows who's following him up the wall, Jim and I. Nice they can smile with so much on the line. Again, the men working against the clock, 60 seconds to reach the top. Mark Anthony and Craig Charles side by side, but Mark loses his grip and down he goes and Nitro grabs a hold of Craig Charles's leg and down he goes. So no points for neither Craig Charles nor Mark Anthony. And after six events, the score remains the same, 18-6, which means that going into the eliminator, Craig Charles will have a six second head start. We'll be back with that event, the Eliminator, right after this. Welcome back to Gladiator Arena, Los Angeles, California. And with only one event remaining, Kimberly Lentz and Jill Shank are focused on their one final task, the Eliminator. Jill has a three second lead over Kimberly, meaning she'll have a one and a half second head start. At stake, a spot in the second round. Here's Larry at the start line. Kimberly, you've been a great competitor. You've been in the thick of the hunt all afternoon. You've got a one and a half second handicap. How does that affect your frame of mind? One and a half seconds is not long, Larry. I think I'm bringing a lot of people from New York with me. So with them behind me, I'm going to go for it. Let's buckle up and have at it. Good luck. Good luck. Treadmill, spinning cylinders, cargo nets, and a hand bike. If the contenders fall off this, they will be assessed a 10 second penalty, enforcing that penalty, diamond and ice. And on the tower for the Gladiators, Blaze with the wink of an eye and Zap. Part of that big ovation that Kimberly got from her mother, Bernice. First challenge for these two contenders, that reverse treadmill. Jill Shank starts first. Pumping hard up the treadmill. Here comes Kimberly Lentz, almost dead even. Across the hand bikes they go. Upper body strength paramount here. Jill Shank crosses first. Now across those spinning cylinders and down she goes. And believe me, that scramble up that ladder is tough. And Kimberly goes down as well. The cargo net may decide this one. Side by side they go. Now it looks like Kimberly may reach the top first. Oh, it's dead even as they hit the zip line. Remember, whoever crosses the finish line first wins. Two walls to conquer, and then a final corridor down a straightaway and across the finish line. Here they come. Kimberly Lance over the first wall. And is very tired. How much strength do both these women have left? Kimberly is over the last wall first. She dodges that one huge medicine ball. Over she goes. And yes, Kimberly Lance from New York City will go on to the second round. Congratulations, Kimberly. Thank you. Great job. You never say die. You made it happen. New York City helped me. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Congratulations. Welcome to the next round. Mike. So Kimberly Lentz snatches victory from the jaws of the feet with that come from behind win. I gave him my arm, my arm to kind of give anatomy on that rope. But I finished. Did the best. Thanks. And I think Jill Shank proved to herself and everyone here she's a winner. But it's time now for mom and daughter to celebrate. For Mark Anthony and Craig Charles, the answer is elementary. Cross the finish line first, and a berth in the second round is assured. However, for Mark, the challenge a much more difficult one. He trails Craig by 12 points, and with each point being worth a half second in time, that means Mark will have to wait at the start line for six seconds before he can take off. Can he make up the difference? Let's find out. Larry's with him at the start line. Mark, how do you feel about the longest six seconds of your life to date? Well, Larry, you know, in certain things, six seconds is a long time. 
This is gonna be a long six seconds, but I just gotta make it up. That's all there is to it. Just gotta do it. I admire your attitude. Good luck. Thanks. What Mark doesn't want to happen is to add seven seconds to that six because seven seconds is the penalty the men will be assessed if they fall off the hand bike. There's Turbo and Laser. They'll assess that penalty down in the pit below the hand bike. And on the tower, well, there's Thunder. What a man. <laughs> He'll be joined up there by Nitro. Larry, how many times have we seen contenders with huge head starts, nine seconds, eight seconds, lose all of that in the very first test, the treadmill? I'll tell you what, Mike, probably a full 40 to 50% of the times. It just seems like that advantage just turns around to a handicap as often as not. Ready? A contender must start like he's in the 100-yard dash, stay low. Craig stays low. Look at him zip across that hand bike. Here comes Mark. Mike, you know full well these two are probably the best practice times we've had in this event. They're head to head. We're gonna see what happens here. Greg Charles already up on the cargo netting. Mark Anthony trying to keep his balance. He does. Down the zip line, here comes Craig Charles. The immigration officer from Overland Park, Kansas. First in the physical fitness test at the Border Patrol Academy. Over that He's second wall. Where's right now? Avoids the ball, takes a leap over the hurdle, and he's here. Greg Charles on his way to the second round. Craig, great job. You know, you took advantage of that uh, that head start and made it happen. Well, I was planning as if we were even at the beginning. I wasn't uh, thinking of any head start or anything. Just wanted to go do my best, 110 percent. He's great. I just, I did. That's my event. I know your buddies are very proud of you. Congratulations and welcome to the next round. Thanks a lot, Larry. All right, back to you, Mike. And so, congratulations in order to first our runners-up, Mark Anthony and Jill Shank. But going on to the next round, it's Craig Charles and Kimberly Lentz. Coming up next week, we'll have more exciting action. But for now, I'm Mike Adamley saying so long for Larry Zonka and all of us here on the American Gladiators.